A good run of results late in the 2007-2008 campaign saw City in the promotion playoffs and through to the final at Wembley Stadium. City fans had sung about this for decades. Ticket fever hit the KC. At times the KC looked like a campsite. 36,000 tickets went in hours. A further 1,500 were allocated and they were snapped up too. We've been here since 9 o'clock. Uh, we're cold. We're, yeah, we're all freezing, cold, but, but it's well matter. worth it. Absolutely worth it. Oh, brilliant, mate. Do you know what I mean? Just, just well, it's everything, isn't it? You know, following for the lower divisions, coming to the championship, not so good at the beginning of the season. Do you know what I mean? Then picked it up. I was hoping for automatic promotion, of course, like we all was. Want to be so day out at Wembley. Bonus, isn't it? You know what I mean? Great day, mate. Win or lose, Hull City versus Bristol City at Wembley Stadium would be the biggest match in Hull City's 104-year history. Win and City will be playing top-flight football for the very first time. Manager Phil Brown was determined to keep a lid on the excitement that swept through the squad. The only change to the routine was the number of cameras recording it. Uh, 90 minutes away from the Premier League or 90 minutes away from coming back into the Championship. It's, uh, it's a massive prize and, uh, you know, one where looking forward to you know we've worked hard for to get to this place you know 48 games now in, in the league and uh, two memorable playoff semi-finals one at Vicarage Road where we we set the set the standard for the second game to be fair and then all of a sudden this game uh, raised one or two eyebrows the fact that Watford went 1-0 up um, but we finished the game very, very strongly and, and consequently we deserve to be where we are at this moment in time. But Bristol City will be saying exactly the same thing. Um, I think it's one of them days where you look forward to in your life and uh, you look forward to as a player or a coach or as a manager. And um, we're looking forward to getting away from this place, strangely enough. We've got um, a couple of days preparation down in the south, getting a, a camp down there, uh, which we did prior to the Watford game. And uh, hopefully that'll be a recipe for success. Just another game, innit? I know it's a massive, massive game for the club, but we're at Wembley. But you know, when everything's uh, stripped down, it's still 90 minutes, and um, we've got a job to do. You know what I mean? We've worked hard all season for this chance. Uh, we've got the chance, so we've got to try and take it now. I think that's what we've said this week to try and keep it as normal as we can. You know, not to make it a circus, um, not doing anything different. No suits, no different things. We're doing it. We're doing, trying to do exactly the same build-up as we did for Watford. Which was, which was tremendous build up to it and ideal preparation, that's what we're trying to do again. We've seen the team coach pull up outside many football stadiums, but the next one would be different. The next one counted for much, much more than three points. It was a date with destiny. City's journey to Wembley started on Thursday the 22nd of May. And for Kitman Barry Lowe, this meant more work than usual. More kit, more food, more drinks. After loading up at the KC, next stop was Brantingham Park. It wasn't exactly a media circus, but the local and national press were given one last chance to record events prior to the journey south. The team seemed to be in good spirits, the bags were packed, and then they were gone. There were a few more team members to be collected on the way. We found the coach at a service station on the A1, and so did City fan Steve Buckley, who admitted to his own superstitions. I haven't slept properly since we beat Watford for one. Just unbelievable. I'm on edge. I'm doing everything. I put 36 litres of, of uh, diesel of petrol in the car. Rather, I live at number 36. So everything is, you know. So we're going to win 36 now. Two one. <laughs> we don't know where Steve was staying prior to the game, but we're pretty certain it wasn't Champney's Health Spa. Ready? Are they fit enough? Yeah, look, that's lads are looking good. To be fair. Uh, quite calm, so things are looking good. We've had a good training week, nice and steady. So uh, now lads are looking sharp. Any special treatments for anybody? I think we're going to have a little couple of massages today, so uh, a little bit of feet and head and everything. So yeah, nice and steady. I mean, I used to do this, come to this place actually when I played for Luton Town, and we used to come exactly the same and just have the treatments, massages, swim, whatever, and relax. And then, then when it starts again tomorrow, we'll be we're focused. I mean, tomorrow's. You know, a really, really good day that we're going off to Wembley in the morning to have a look around. Um, and then we're training at Arsenal training ground in the afternoon, so tremendous preparation. On most of City's squad, it was the first look at the new Wembley Stadium. Quiet, but for a few press and TV people, but nonetheless daunting. 
probably about now that the scale of the task facing them began to sink in. A full house at the KC Stadium can generate a wall of sound to intimidate any visitor, but the scale of Wembley is something else. The changing rooms are something else too. To describe them as luxurious doesn't do them justice. While the players took the time to acclimatise to the surroundings, the backroom staff got on with more mundane tasks. Thirty minutes after they arrived at Wembley, City were gone. The final training session was at Arsenal's tightly guarded North London training ground. It was a facility City shared with the England squad preparing for their friendly against the United States. No TV crews allowed, but our undercover cameraman didn't let us down. Sam. After spending the final pre-Wembley night at the Grove Hotel, there was an early start for kitman Barry Lowe. Well, it's been pretty hectic this past couple of days, but we're finally going to the end of the road now. And what's the mood back at base? Oh, it's excellent. Everything's been played down to low key. Everything's uh, going to plan as it should do. Yeah, it's really, really enjoying it. No, we came down yesterday, started to put the lights on, turn the music up, got the party started, ready for today. Invited 37,000 friends down and they've all turned up, so fantastic. Came across Thursday, uh, all the way from uh, from Dallas uh, in Texas, and um, where, where else where else would we be on a day like this to see the uh, the whole march off to victory and uh, and uh, go and, and do really good stuff in the Premiership next season. Thumbs up from first team coach Steve Parkin as the team bus arrived at the stadium. It remained to be seen whether City's confidence could withstand Bristol's attempt to destroy it. Let battle commence. Unfashionable perhaps, uncharted certainly, but there will be a new destination for the Premier League sat nav next season. Will it be a new Western outpost though, or will it be the East Riding of Yorkshire? Event product though, it's Elliot towards Macindo, it's Dili Adibola and it's away by Ricketts. Well, it's his first touch, it's away from him now, Hull City can counter attack, it's Nick Barnby, Windass to his right, Campbell to his left, Hull City's top scorer, Fraser Campbell, a slip by Lewis Carey. Windass! Quite simply, destined to be from Dean Windass. Clinical volley, a vital step forward, and who knows, maybe that's the moment from the hometown boy. But for 104 years of history, the city of Hull has been dreaming of that. Well, it's fairy tale stuff, isn't it? For the first time, Fraser Campbell's allowed to turn and run, and he leaves the defenders on their backside. But then he's got the presence of mind to spot Windassen. How about that for volley and technique? It is first class, gets his head. Still watches the ball right onto his foot while well, the rest is history. That is absolutely magnificent. Hull City are in the Premier League, and that is something that no one has ever said before, and anyone's listened. Dean Windass's wonderful, magical goal, the cleanest and purest of strikes has meant that his boyhood dreams and that of a footballing city have come true here in North London this afternoon. Hello, Premiership. 
Fraser, when you got to Hull City from Manchester United, you expected the season to end this way, yes? No, not really. It was, uh, it's been a fairy tale end to the season. It's been absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I've enjoyed every second of it. Cheers, lads. And not a bad season overall, 15 goals in total. Yeah, 15 goals in total. Um, but yeah, the overall performance has just been great and I've enjoyed every second of this long spell. Cast your mind back to when you joined. What did the manager say to you? Did he say to you, with your help, we're going to go for promotion? Well, he said that um, he's got his team and he, he knows what players he needed. And if I, I thought that I could be the final piece in the jigsaw. And I believed in him and I believed in the rest of the squad. And we weren't in a great position when I came. But, <laughs> but, now, uh, but now we're in a great position. We're in a premiership. Well, many, many congratulations, but it was tough out there today, wasn't it? It was tough, you know, in the second half, obviously, 1-0 up, we knew he was going to uh, be under some pressure. But uh, they threw everything at us in the end, you know, the last 10 minutes, but the lads dealt with it well. Um, and a fantastic achievement, you know, it's, it probably ain't sunk in yet, you know, but uh, I'm sure it will pre-season. You needed some characters back there for the last 10 minutes or so, didn't you, really? Well, we've got a lot of characters in the team, and the longer the season's gone on, the more character that we've had, you know, the lads have rose to the occasion. We went on a little run towards the end of the season, obviously, to get us in the pole position. A bit unfortunate to miss out on automatic promotion, but it's always nice when a third team gets promoted, you know. So uh, I think, uh, you know, it's just rewards in the end. I've been here, what, five years now? Uh, 2003, I think it was when I come here, and obviously the, the seeds were there. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a day that, even today, I, I can honestly say with my hand on my heart, I was never nervous for a single second during the whole game because I just believed all the way through that this was our year and it was meant to be. And it's turned out the way it has. Take us through the game, Bo, as, uh, can you remember it? Is it all just a blur? Or? Um, once again, like they have all season, the boys have defended ever so well. They've run around all over the pitch. Um, all credit to the lads that um, have put real hundred loads of um, loads of sweat on a shirt and stuff today. And, and obviously Dino with his bit of quality has won us the game. On it, yeah, he loves it. He loves his publicity. He'll be absolutely milking it to bits, and why not? Because since he's been here, he's done a brilliant job for the club. Uh, he, uh, he, he sometimes he rubs people up the wrong way, but when he comes up with the results, you absolutely love him, and I love him to death. It's brilliant. It's been a great signing. You, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, they started quite well, but um, we managed to get ourselves back in the game. And when we started to play football, we looked we looked decent um, and, and, and quite comfortable. Um, they, I think they only had the really the big long threat of the, the long ball to Dealey and you know getting flick ons. But um, I think as soon as Dino scored, um, the, the, the pressure was really on them. They had to obviously get a goal, um, and it, it made it easier for us on the counter attacks. Um, I sort of knew that we were going to keep a clean sheet because the, the defence has been magnificent at the back um, turns. He's, he's been obviously. He's got all accolades this season, and rightly so. Um, the whole back four has been really good, <clears throat> and with Bo as well at the back. So um, I thought, sort of thought it was safe, and I just thought we were going to go and nick another goal, to be honest. Dean's read the script perfectly, hasn't he? Yeah, um, I, I said to him, did you know you had time? And he said, no, I, had, I thought I had a man behind me. So um, he's done well to put it in the back of the net from there. It's a great finish, great contact on the ball. And, to be fair, the ball from Fraser, you know, he sort of made it for him, made it a lot easier. Yeah, it is fantastic. You know, a great day. That was for the fans today more than anyone else. You know, the lads have been superb all season. Um, unbelievable day and, uh, you know, one, one to remember. Um, yeah, you know, when we came down there, to be fair, when we, they started well, which, you know, we, we knew that they were going to do that. They were, you know, they're a good side. Um, they've been consistent all season. So but after 10, 15 minutes, we settled down and uh, good passes you play for the goal. Great goal. And um, it's always tight, these games. Uh, it was a bit nerve wracking at the end, but fantastic defending by the uh, lads. Turns outstanding. <sighs> It all comes down to 90 minutes of football and it's all about pressure, it's all about bottle, it's all about holding yourself together and, uh, and we did all that today. The players put their bodies on the line, two a man, every one of them and every, you know, Dean Windus is going to get a lot of plaudits for the goal that he scored but you think about the bodies that were getting thrown in front of the ball towards the end when Bristol City had nothing else to lose but throw bodies and balls into the box uh, to get a clean sheet in the heat of the battle today was a magnificent achievement for the team. It's going right in the middle of my centre piece as my, my favourite piece. So, yeah, it's one of my best achievements so far in my career. So, it's great.